Yo, I'm back, and I'm ready to talk more about the Souls series. And what better way to celebrate my channel's newfound attention than by making the entire fanbase mad at me? Because today we're ranking the entire series from worst to best. Now, just to clarify before going into this, I have beaten every one of these games multiple times, and about half of them I've beaten more times than I could possibly count. So I'd say that I probably meet the criteria to do something like this. Also, when it comes to specific editions of the games, I should mention that I've only played the Scholar of the First Sin edition of Dark Souls 2, and I've only played the original PS3 version of Demon Souls, because at the time of recording, I do not own a PS5. And please try to remember, I don't dislike a single one of these titles. While I don't think all of these games are necessarily for everyone, I do think that each of them brings something special to the table, and are all valuable in their own right. And one last very important thing to note before jumping into the list is that, while this is my current ranking of the games, that doesn't mean that in a few months it won't look significantly different. Since I pretty much love all of these titles, it can be pretty difficult to compare them to each other. Aside from the top two, those are actually pretty set in stone. Now, without any further ado, here's my ranking of every Soulsborne game from worst to best. And coming in at last place as my least favorite game in the series, we have... Demon's Souls. Now, I know a lot of people won't be happy with this decision. After all, the series owes everything to this title. Like, my favorite game series of all time would not exist if this game didn't do well. And I really appreciate it for laying the groundwork of this fantastic franchise. So first I'm going to talk about why I really like it. And definitely the main thing that sticks out about this game compared to the others is its unique atmosphere. Some may say that the world and setting come off as something like a beta for Dark Souls 1's setting, but I really think it feels like its own thing. Admittedly not as fleshed out as some of the later titles, but still valuable in its own merit. And one thing that really surprised me with this one was just how much I liked the world structure. And I'm not saying it's necessarily better than how the other games tend to do it, but since this was the sixth game in the series that I played, I really liked seeing the different approach to how you can clear the levels. You could go through one archstone at a time, or clear the first level of each of them first, then move on to the next, or just do it in whatever unorganized manner you want. Speaking of the levels, I think the level design in this game is very consistent. Even the less enjoyable ones tend to have a bit of that signature FromSoft connectivity to some extent. So why is this game my least favorite? There's a few important reasons why, and I'll start by mentioning my issues with the game itself, rather than the things that are a matter of me playing the original version. And honestly, one of the biggest things that keeps me from replaying this game is the upgrade material system. It's so unnecessarily long and tedious, especially if you're like me and love using the Dragonbone Smasher. However, if you want to use the Dragonbone Smasher, you'll have to make good use of the World Tendency system, which is my next issue. I don't think it's inherently a bad idea, but man, I'm sure so many players had their first playthrough ruins just because they didn't understand it, since the game never really goes out of its way to let you know that it exists. Another thing is that while this game has some pretty good bosses, overall they aren't really much to be impressed by, and I think that may be partially due to me playing on the PS3 version. Since the PS5 remaster came out, I've heard many people praising some of the game's bosses, and I might be wrong about this, but I think the PS5 version is a bit more fair with some of the fights, with the first thing coming to mind being Flame Lurker. While I think some of the bosses such as False King Alant and Tower Knight genuinely hold up after all these years, I think Demon's Souls' old movement is just a bit dated and doesn't feel perfectly fair all the time. And the final reason why I can't put this game any higher is because I think it has the least standout moments of any game in the series. For example, while I think Demon's Souls is an objectively better game than Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2 still has some areas and bosses that I like a lot more than any in Demon's Souls. So yeah, while I appreciate Demon's Souls for what it is and respect it for what it's done for the series, this is just the one that I get the least out of. And coming in at number 6 is Dark Souls 2. Yeah, okay, I'm sure most people were expecting to see this one at the bottom, and for good reason. This game has a lot of issues. If you were to play any other game in the series and then come to this one, the general lack of polish and clunky movement are immediately noticeable. It also has a few systems in it that I think were just terrible ideas, such as your health decreasing after every death, or ADP, making it so that you literally have to level up a stat if you want consistent iframes. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. And where I badmouth Demon Souls a bit for its mediocre bosses, Dark Souls 2 does not get a pass. Basically 80% of the bosses in this game are just so lame and poorly designed compared to the other games, 
Like, imagine playing through Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring, and then immediately coming to Dark Souls 2. I'd probably be genuinely wondering if I bought the wrong game. Like, this? Compared to this? Is just disgusting. And I probably don't even have to mention the overly ganky areas, I think they speak for themselves. However, all that being said, there are a few reasons why I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of this game. Firstly, Bonfire Aesthetics is one of the absolute best ideas in any FromSoft game. Using them, you can do things like continuously replay bosses over and over until you're swimming in souls, which is great because it complements another good aspect of this game, being the build variety and fashion. Before Elden Ring came out, I would have said Dark Souls 2 as the best fits in the series, and a lot of the weapons are actually pretty unique and fun. Same goes for the spells. And at the end of the day, while this game's bosses are pretty bad overall, it does have a few of the best in the series. Sir Alone, Fume Knight, and Dark Lurker are all absolute goats, and I enjoy them every time. So while I can't really argue that Dark Souls 2 is objectively a great game, this is a personal list, and personally, it isn't my least favorite. What a bad and boring game. It was just what I needed. Now, before moving on to my number 5 spot, I have to say that picking spots 3 to 5 was easily the hardest part of this ranking. I love all of these next 5 games so much, in fact, if I made a top 20 favorite games of all time, they'd probably all make the cut. Who knows, maybe I'll make that video in the future. So just keep in mind that these next games are all S tier for me. Now, cracking the top 5, we have Dark Souls 1. It's hard to even think of where to begin with this game. When I see other people rank these games worst to best, this is like the one that could literally be anywhere on the list. For example, almost everyone would put Dark Souls 2 near the bottom, or put Elden Ring and Bloodborne near the top, but I've seen many people say that this is the best and worst game in the series. This game really is an enigma. Even if you haven't played it, you've probably seen these two boys before, or the Praise the Sun meme. No matter how much you like it, it's really hard to deny the amount of love put into it, and it makes sense why out of the franchise, this is still the game that people make the most passion projects talking about, because it's just so damn interesting. Now for my take on it, and my favorite aspect of this game is the same as pretty much everyone else's, the brilliant interconnective world design. I love that you could have a hundred different people play through this game, and their experiences would all be significantly different. Like, yo man, I hated going through the depths. I got cursed and had to do the whole thing with my HP halved. And then some other guy would be like, what the hell is the depths? This game's world and lore are both so iconic, and it makes sense why many still consider it to be THE greatest game of all time. So why is it on the slightly lower side of my list? Well, first of all, while this game's bosses are definitely a big step up from the previous two games, I still don't think they're quite as good as the bosses in the games to come. Artorius, Ornstein and Smo, Manus, and Calamite are still fantastic fights to this day. But other than them, there are a lot that just fall into the meh or okay categories to me. Also, while I still enjoy the combat in this game, it definitely isn't my favorite. The slightly slow and clunky movement is sometimes just enough to keep me from starting a new playthrough. And while I pretty much like everything about this game, there is one aspect of it that I just can't overlook. The second half sucks! Yeah, unfortunately, since the devs didn't quite get the time they needed to finish this game, a lot of the content in the second half is pretty noticeably unfinished. The only area that I really enjoy in the second half is the Duke's Archives, but otherwise, the late game areas tend to range from meh to downright awful. Thank god the DLC exists, since it's honestly great, and allows me to actually look forward to the second half of the game. Otherwise, my playthroughs would likely not last much longer than Ornstein and Smo. So with all that said, Dark Souls 1 is an iconic experience, and I really love it. But for me, there are just better games in the series. And directly in the middle of the list, coming in at number 4, we have Dark Souls 3. Now this was probably the weirdest one for me to rank. Because of the fact that this is the game I've spent the most time on, not just out of the Souls games, but literally any game I've ever played, I'm sort of biased and unbiased towards it. It was my first game in the series, so it was the one that gave me the initial From Software experience, and I won't forget it for that. However, it feels hard for me to properly judge the game at this point. 
The main thing I can't decide how I feel about is the game's areas, which is definitely its most polarizing aspect. I've seen many people claim that Dark Souls 3 has overall fantastic areas, while I've also seen many more say that the areas in this game feel somewhat bland compared to the rest of the series. And if we're talking about the first half, I kind of agree. Things like Undead Settlement, Road of Sacrifices, and Smoldering Lake are probably some of the most forgettable areas in the series. But I think once you reach the second half, it gets a good bit better, with places like Irithyll of the Boreal Valley, Lothric Castle, Archdragon Peak, and the Ring City when including DLC, all being pretty fun and well designed. But let's be real. You know why this game is great. I know why this game is great. It's because of the bosses. Weirdly enough, a good bit of them in the first half kind of aren't all that great, similar to the game's areas, but once you reach a certain point, it is just non-stop beautiful fights. This is probably the game that's most argued to have the best bosses in the series. And while I don't know for sure if I agree with that, I can't deny that they're amazing. I mean, along with the smooth replayable combat, the bosses are the reason why I've replayed this game to such an extent. I'll never forget this game for what it did for me, and buying it was probably the most worth I've gotten from any purchase. So why does it land directly in the middle of the list? Well, there are a few key aspects that I think the top three handle significantly better than this one. The first thing is areas. Like I said, while I don't dislike this game's areas, I just think the top three have way more consistently fun ones. Plus, this is definitely the most linear game in the series, with very little of the classic FromSoft interconnectivity seen in Dark Souls 1. The second thing is atmosphere. While Dark Souls 3's dreary and lifeless atmosphere does make sense from a story perspective, and I do think it did a pretty good job of closing out the trilogy, I just think that the lifelessness leans a little bit into the blandness that some people criticize it for. And the last thing, though not a huge deal, is the enemy design. Don't get me wrong, Dark Souls 3 does have some of the best enemies in the series, but I feel like for every great one, I could probably think of two that are just really annoying. So while I love this game to death, I just think some of the other games are superior. And at number three, I have Elden Ring. <laughs> you serious? While I know there will be a lot of people who are upset that it isn't higher, there are also many who claim that it's one of the worst due to the reused mini bosses, time spent collecting materials, and occasionally unfair fights. So no matter where you put this game compared to the others, people will get angry. And this is just where it lands for me. I also really did consider putting Dark Souls 3 ahead of this one, but at the end of the day, I just can't deny that this game has way more to offer, and it has much better areas. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I think this game probably has the best build variety in the series. It could be argued that it takes too long to collect smithing stones to really get a feel for all the weapons without wasting a lot of time, but that doesn't really bother me too much, especially since I tend to prefer somber smithing stone weapons, which are a bit easier to upgrade. And while some people complain about the reused bosses and dungeons, on replay, this doesn't really bother me much, since I know which caves have which bosses, and I can simply choose to fight the ones that I enjoy. Overall, I think this game was an absolute success, and possibly from software's greatest achievement to date. Their take on an open world design was insanely fun to explore, and I'll never forget my first experience with this game. So what holds it back from the top two for me? Well, like I said, the open world is a really fun experience, but upon continuously replaying it, I think it just doesn't flow quite as well as the other games. New Game Plus makes the early game pretty pointless, and starting a new character feels a bit tedious due to how much grinding you need to do from the start. While I really appreciate these games for their small intricacies and spend a lot of time appreciating them, sometimes I really just like to run through them and face off against the bosses. And while I really enjoy Elden Ring's bosses, I don't think there are quite enough main ones to justify running through it in order to face them. If the game had maybe five or six more Remembrance bosses, it might be a different story, but as is, it's still incredible, just not enough to stand against my two personal favorites. Number two, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. If this list was solely based on my first playthrough of each game, Sekiro would probably be number one. After I first beat it, I was like, yep! This is the best game of all time, and Sword Saint Ishin is the best boss of all time. Overall, one of the most impressive things to me about this game is just how consistent it is. Out of every game in the series, this one has easily the least wasted space. It's probably the most tight and well-polished game out of the bunch. I think it definitely has the most consistently great areas out of the games. Ashina Castle, Senpu Temple, Ashina Outskirts, Hirata Estate, and Fountainhead Palace? The only area in this game that I consider to not be that great would be Ashina Depths, since it's mostly filled with reused enemies and mini-bosses. But even so, I don't hate it at all. 
It just pales in comparison to the rest of the game. Now that's all great and everything, but the main reason this game is so high is pretty obvious. It's the combat. <laughs> Now there are many things that give a game a good combat system. Some games rely on the sheer variety of ways you can fight, others thrive off of the spectacle of their encounters, and there are also those that put a lot of emphasis on finding cool ways to combo attacks together. But what Sekiro nails better than anything else is the satisfaction of its difficulty curve. Many people consider this to be the hardest game in the series, and that's because initially this game really throws you into the lion's den, and it takes a while to get the hang of it at first. But once you do get it down, there are few things more satisfying. Now, definitely one of this game's biggest drawbacks in comparison to the others is the lack of build variety, since you literally only use one weapon for the whole game. It does have the prosthetic tools, which help to spice things up a little, but ultimately they don't really make up for the lack of weapons. But when the combat is this much fun on its own, I hardly even think about it. Plus, due to how Sekiro fights work, I don't know if different weapons would really help that much. Like, with the boss fights, you pretty much deflect and dodge most of the time, and hit them back maybe up to 20% of the time. Speaking of the bosses, similar to this game's areas, I think it has the most consistently fun bosses in the series. The Guardian Ape Gank is kinda whack, and after your first playthrough, the folding screen monkeys don't really have much value, but I think pretty much every other main boss in this game is pure fun. This is such a beautiful game. And if you haven't played it and you're up for a good challenge, please do yourself a favor and give this masterpiece a chance. But even considering all that, we still have one game left. And at number one, Bloodborne. I know these days, more and more people have been calling Bloodborne overrated. Back when there were only five games in the series, almost everyone seemed to say it was their favorite, but especially with its recent competition in Sekiro and Elden Ring, more and more people are saying that it's not all it's cracked up to be. And I don't mind that at all. I'm glad people don't mindlessly call this one the best due to old popular opinions. But for me personally, this is still the peak. First of all, combat. They basically just took Dark Souls combat and made a few key tweaks that, in my opinion, make this more fun than any of the Souls games. The rally system, parrying with guns instead of shields, dashing instead of rolling when locked on, just the general faster movement speed, it's so much fun. And I have to give a shout out to the weapons in this game. I love the quality over quantity approach that they took with them. For the most part, every weapon is actually unique, as opposed to the overflowing copy-pasted movesets found in the other games. And the transforming attacks were such a great idea, giving the weapons actual moves while they switch between their two forms is so badass. Overall, while I don't think Bloodborne's combat is quite as fun as Sekiro's, I think it has a lot more variety. And while I don't think it quite has the variety of Elden Ring combat, I think it's more fun. To me, it hits the perfect middle ground. And the bosses usually complement it pretty well. While I don't think Bloodborne has the absolute best boss lineup in the series, they're still really good, especially in the DLC. Speaking of which, it's probably the best DLC in the series. Ring City from Dark Souls 3 is great, and I'm sure we'll all be blown away when Elden Ring's DLC drops. But this one is probably my favorite, for both the bosses and the areas. Speaking of areas, the ones in this game are generally awesome, and while it doesn't have the peak interconnectivity of Dark Souls 1 or Elden Ring, there's still a lot of unique ways that the areas loop around each other and connect. The areas are also well aided by the game's incredible atmosphere. I know some people share the opinion that this game's atmosphere is a bit dull since it's so consistently dimly lit, and doesn't have a ton of variety with its environments, making it get a bit tiring after a while. But for me, it has easily the best atmosphere in the series. I've never experienced anything like it before, and a lot of it is aided by the lore. I haven't really discussed lore much in this video, and I generally really like it in all of these games. It makes them feel a lot more epic when you know the context behind the worlds you explore. But for me, Bloodborne's lore is easily the best. Like, 
Yeah, prolonging the age of fire is cool and all, but have you ever fought beings that transcend human comprehension? In my eyes, this game is basically flawless. The only things I don't really like are the healing system, since I think it's way too punishing on new players and can even be enough to make some people drop the game, the chalice dungeons, which are thankfully completely optional anyway, and the fact that it's a PlayStation exclusive, meaning its performance isn't what it could be and many people won't get the chance to play it. But aside from those things, this is about as close to perfect as games can get for me. And that's why Bloodborne is my favorite game in the series. Well, if you made it this far into the video, then thanks for watching. Honestly, I could have gone a lot more into depth with some of the games, like, I didn't even mention how good the music is in most of them, but I didn't want this video to be an hour long, and I feel like I still got the most important points across. Anyway, that's it for the video. See y'all on the next one.